I appreciate it. I have a certain little bit of maintenance to do today, and that's for my Caticlia Atra Walker. And then we're going to address Brassavola tuberculata as well. But because of my Leopoldii and scale thing that I discovered, wasn't too pleased about. I've been going along the lower shelf of where that Leopoldii was living as well. And I saw some happenings of mealybugs on my Atra Walker. I also see new roots growing. Now she hasn't been in this pot a year, but I don't care. Um, if I see some bug activity, I want to get in there because I can, I also have new roots growing, clean her up properly. And also do a root checkup clearly because I got her when she was teeny, teeny, tiny. She's been a struggling orchid from day one. Orchids, there we go, great. Here we have the classic one becomes two. Because this morning when I was going through that shelf, I also took off some of the back bulbs from back here. While still in the pot, they were so loose, I could just pull the back bulbs off. And I thought, oh, okay. We need to get in there and have a closer look, see what is going on. But I don't see any trouble. There's no rot. But it's best to, at this stage, with new roots growing, take advantage and go in and see if there's anything else that could be causing issues. You see my nice new roots here? Look at them. Yeah, that's what I want to see. I have a dead root I can get rid of. This root can stay, even though it's looking browny on the top there. Hmm, I may need to rethink what it is that I want to do, pot her up in. I may need to go down a pot size because she should be a lot more vigorous than she is right now. And even though it is inorganic media, pot size shouldn't matter. But why be silly about it when you have other options? Give her a start that might help her recover. I also ideally don't want to have two pots, but if that's what it takes, then that's what it's gonna be because it's not about what is convenient for me, but what is best for the orchid. So this is the second piece, which is growing nice roots, extending nicely. Hasn't grown its new roots yet, but I'm anticipating at a moment's notice. So I think it's a good time to do what we're doing right now. But yeah, my little Atro Walker. <laughs> At least I can see progress on the root front. That's what it's all about, progress. We might not be getting ahead with leaps and bounds, but there is progress. This root looks dead, but it is very, very firm, so I'm going to leave it. But what I will do is get it cleaned up with some insecticidal soap. This is a brand I will put up a picture of that I use. On occasions, I normally go with my alcohol and garlic, but as I'm going into nooks and crannies here and I have her out of the pot, I can be a bit more liberal with what I'm doing with an industrial manufactured insecticidal soap. Right, so you're okay. We'll put you to the side and then we'll treat you as well. This morning I did go with my paintbrush and I did paint down all the pseudobulbs, all the leaves. But now I can at least get into the crevices down here be a bit more diligent about it. I have to think what I would like to do here. She's going in my seedling cups. So I will be back. I have to prepare seedling cups for this. So I have these little seedling cups that I use a lot. And that's going to work. Yeah, I like this. This is going to work. Let's see about you. This is going to be fine. We can do this. 
But these seedling cups do not have any holes on them just yet, so I'm going to take my Dremel out and prepare two holes for the semi-hydro. Or the alternative would be to put them into these right here. Let's have a look-see. We won't be able to see the roots, but what I can't see happening at the bottom of the pot, I look for at the top with the health of the leaves and the orchid itself. And that would work as well. So instead of going with the seedling cups and the Dremel, I'm going to reinstate what I used to use for my Neos, or still do, these right here because they're ready to go. Their size is adequate. But I still see a little bit of white on this leaf that I am not liking one bit. One little bit of white in that leaf there that I'm not liking at all. So if you disturb these orchids and their pests, they will start to move around and you're not done and dusted just because you've treated them. They're now moving around. We'll address that immediately, at this time just with alcohol and a paintbrush. We'll just go in here, wipe the leaf clean. Hopefully that's in focus. Basically, if it's not in focus, I apologize. It is just alcohol on a paintbrush wiping down the leaves. There are some hard water stains on this orchid, not to be confused with any pests. But still, if it's white and fluffy and small, it's not a good thing. Right, so I prepared myself two pots, and while I was doing that, I was questioning why do I need two pots? I thought initially to put them separate, but let's see if they would fit in together. The reason I didn't want to have them in a single pot because I'm thinking positively, and if they take off, then I don't want to be doing this in a year again, because they've always been disturbed year after year after year. So yeah, they're going, separately. I don't want to be messing with the roots, quetching them around. Not happening. We're going to take care of that and we're going to see that we do it gently. It is a semi-hydro pot so I need something else to fill up the water with. Otherwise we are going to be here all day trying to make sure that that pot actually stays full. So I just put a little bit of lacquer down to where the holes start or end, depending on how you want to look at it. And then I'm just going to place her in and fill around. second case here I'm going to leave her a little bit low just like with the other one because I want the humidity around the base of the pot to protect myself a little bit against the hot dry air that we are coming up now it's mid-July we're heading into August I've had some extremely hot winds so the plan is to make sure that there's enough humidity around the base for the roots to grow into the pot. And then once the roots are long enough, I can fill up around the surface. That way I've already got roots in the pot. And you can see that she's blowing in the wind there a bit, which is not ideal when it comes to making sure of protecting root tips. So I'm just going to maneuver Lekka right under her base there to stop that from happening. I did prepare supports 
but there's a lot of jiggling going on if I start with those supports now. Now that I have that bit of leka underneath, I'm going to just try and wrap the support wire a little bit, just for a bit of stability. It's not going to look very appealing for a little while, but once those roots are down and holding the orchid into the media, then this can come off. This is just for now to avoid any kind of jiggling. There we go. It looks very strange but I believe it's going to be effective. This one is a little bit easier. She has many more pseudobulbs that help with the stability in the pot. Right, now comes the big one for me, the Brassavola tuberculata, because I'm gonna be using a media I've never used before. We gotta try it out. Next up is my Brassavola tuberculata. I really want to get the culture of this one right, even though I know it doesn't look like much, but it did grow beautifully the way it does. Single needles once a year and it has bloomed for me. So it should be okay, but I don't like the look of the pot. And I think that is an understatement right there. Has been in the pot since it's arrived with me. I have been soaking it, but look at this root right here. The new root of 2020, because literally that's all it does. One root. <laughs> I have another one coming here, which I need to be super careful of. But this one, yeah, I want to try and get it out of Lekka. I've been toying with the idea of putting it into lava rock, but I don't want to be buying more lava rock because I've got all my repiculous lalias that I have as yet to repot. So I'm gonna put her in sponge rock, something I have never used before, something I have a big bag of, clean her up, and then see if I can't get a little bit better looking pot environment. The reason I'm using sponge rock and only sponge rock is because it's airy. It doesn't clog up, if that makes any sense. Lekka might be airy and do well as well, but I would like to try the sponge rock because I want to make sure that if I ever repot this orchid again, that I won't have to, oh, whoa, do you see that? Yeah, there, yeah. That I won't have to do this and ruin the roots. Brassavola roots for me are extremely delicate. They take forever to start absorbing any kind of water when they grow, when they're new. Oh boy. Well, I'm glad I left this one for last because I may not have tackled my Atra Walker today at the same time. Okay, we've loosened you. Yeah, they take forever to absorb water. They don't appreciate, as far as I'm concerned, being clogged with any kind of media that doesn't allow for a lot of aeration, but you can see that my Lekka isn't doing such a bad job. I have prepared sponge rock just in case, and when I say prepared, I mean I've flushed it a lot through with just plain water so that I get all the dust off. And sponge rock is also much more forgiving when it comes time to repot as opposed to lava rock. I could also say, hey, she grows so slowly, how often will I have to repot her? <sighs> That's why I've been, yeah, toying with different options. But let's see how she actually did. Yeah, you see? Did not like the Lekka at all. And I say that with a bit of sadness in my voice because I feel like everything would work and grow really well in Lekka, but clearly, no. Not her. And that's why we're going to try sponge rock. Because I want the humidity that this orchid requires. I have to compensate for the lack of humidity in my climate. But clearly I don't want her to have to always struggle with growing new roots because I'm being stubborn about my Lekka setup. <sighs> for that reason, we're gonna try sponge rock. 
Now, if she is the kind of orchid that dumps her old roots as a cycle, as a rule, then the, the sponge rock's not gonna change anything either. But I don't know that. I don't know that for sure. I would like to find out. And then we're going to give her different setup and see if that would work for her and her maintaining her roots long term. I've been on a on a pest hunt. So I'm just checking now to see if she's got anything going on under the dried sheath. She's so delicate that I hardly ever manipulate her, touch her, except for flushing and maintenance. But this is, you know, I don't actually go in and clean the sheaths on this one ever because look at how tiny and fragile she is. And I have to be really careful not to snap anything. So we're not gonna to be too pedantic about this. Always mindful of these root tips. I am glad that she wanted to branch. That gives me hope. But other than that, this is not a good thing after two years, three years. Again, being a species, being a Brassavola, everything here could be part of the trait of the orchid. I bet she would prefer to be mounted, but I'm not going to do that. I already have two Brassavolas on a mount and they keep me busy. That's why she's going to go into something completely different. I know, sorry, dirty pot, apologies. Before I clean this pot up, I want to make a point also for my records that I had two microfibers in here trying to increase the humidity around her. So let's see what I'm gonna do with the sponge rod. But first I'll clean the pot up and I'll be right back. You can see all the dust at the bottom of the bowl because I had my strainer in here just to see how this sponge rock reacts and look at it, it floats. So we won't be doing the gentle repot with using water in the pot because that is totally counterproductive. But it gives me hope that it is gentle on the roots when it comes to time to repot this orchid, meaning that it'll lift easily out of the pot. There won't be any abrasions or damage to the roots. The same with lava rock. So let's give it a go. I'm also only using one microfiber because sponge rock is so much more water retentive holding on to humidity, etc., than LECA is. And I think with one microfiber will be just fine. I don't need to worry about too much dryness in and around the pot or on the top layer. Recycled my support from the Atra Walker. That worked well. Now I just want to see if this is going to go according to what I'm thinking using that support or if I need to center the support more into the middle or what we're going to do. That's fine. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right, let's get that wire in place before we start messing about with the orchid. Let's see. One direction of growth, that's not complicated. Root tips, they are complicated. There's a bit of branching that I can see in the back here. That's a good sign. And seeing as it wanted to grow out, I would like it to grow into the pot. But Brassavola roots are, they're different. They're very stiff, but so, so delicate. So I'm not sure I wanna mess around with that. I'll go with what I have in the pot. This is gonna be the lightest pot that I have in my entire orchid collection. We raise you up a little bit. I really don't want her that high in the, in the pot, not this time. If I can maximize all the humidity while she's lower in the pot, then I feel as though I can provide like a hybrid setup of mount, which it isn't mounted, 
but lots of air and lots of humidity. I mean, what can go wrong, huh? I'm going to add more in the back here because this part, this root was down in the previous pot. It was under and in the leka. I'm gonna make a little, like a little mountain right there. Raise it up a bit. It's like working with snow. <laughs> you don't want it to break. Very strange stuff. Don't want to cover the rhizome. I want plenty of air around the rhizome. Let's see what this brings. I feel way out of my comfort zone here, way out of it. But I also feel a little bit like I'm glad I've made the decision. It makes sense in my head, if that makes sense, even if just that sentence makes sense. This makes sense in my head. Who knows what goes on in my head? <laughs> All right, let's get cleaned up here. Talk about blinded by the sun, huh? It's <laughs> a bit white out, so let's put all that in the shade. Because I want to flush it through one more time. You have to be very, very careful with the flushing as well, because this material is super light and the pot feels super light, so that's going to take some getting used to. This is plain RO water because she's had her soaks with CalMag in order to do this repot. This is also going to be a test for me to see how much mineral buildup there would be in this orchid. Most of the fertilizing I do for this Brassavola tuberculata is via flushing. And then there's water, plain RO water in the reservoir. So this is new for me. The things we do, I'm way out of my comfort zone. I think I already mentioned that, but I'm going to repeat it because it's true. These two, I think I know what I'm doing. If I can just stay on top of the pests, they should be all right. I love that new growth right there. Yes, I had a change of heart. I also put a support around the second one. Better safe than sorry, right? I hope that you will be as curious as I am to see how this grow stone setup works. Really hope that this was of interest to you. I appreciated your company very, very much. Thank you so very much for watching and Please, if you have any questions with what I'm doing here <laughs> that I can answer, leave those questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Hope to see you again in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.